welcome to Little Birdie's Monday Sports Show, First Look. I'm your host, Nikki Sylvester. First Look is proudly brought to you by Little Birdie TV, topsport.com.au, punting form and manscaped for the very best in men's grooming. Joining me today in studio is MG. All right, Nikki. I'm good. Pulled up okay from last night, have we? Yes, yes, yes. Pulled up. Had a great night. Um, industry awards, so shared tables at Palladium. Right. My grandma did get a Lifetime Achievement Award. Okay. So it was a big night. She was a celebrity that night and um, it was great. It was good fun. Yeah. Really good fun. Good to see your social calendar hasn't slowed down since you're uh, <laughs> back in Melbourne. No, of course not. Why would it slow down? I All mean. Right. Glad to see you've made it here this morning. <laughs> Fresh as. Fresh as. All right, very good. <laughs> All right, we've had a big week in sports so Huge. far. We'll just run through what's been going on. Uh, the cricket IPL final was played and uh, Victor- ex-Victorian Matty Wade's uh, new team, the Titans, uh, got the victory there. They had to chase yeah. down 130 runs and uh, beat the Royals. So good win there with a uh, bit of an Australian flavour. Yeah, and then what do we got? We've got the big um, quarterfinal clash for the, uh, for the French Open. So we've got Nadal and Djokovic. Yeah, Nadal and Djokovic playing the quarterfinals coming up uh, tomorrow. Will yeah. be, well, depending on when to watch the show, but yeah, so that'll be uh, Battle of the Titans Ooh. early in the Ooh, uh, geez, in the I'm calendar. All... So yeah, Team Nadal there. Out. Team Nadal there. Yes. Uh, we've got the uh, NBA Finals Game 7 coming up uh, today. Um, Celtics and Heat play uh, in Miami to decide who plays the Warriors coming up uh who gets all the chocolates here in the final. And uh, the Monaco Grand Prix, you managed to get home from your function last night to uh, to watch the Monaco Grand Prix. What, what was the rundown? I know I it was delayed. Our man Borco yep. that sits uh, that runs this show is an <laughs> avid motorsport and he's filthy. He had to go to bed, he said. He is. He would delay. be filthy. Um, yeah, look, it was perfect. So got perfect timing, got home, and they were all just swapping from um, wets to intermediate and then onto slicks and pretty much – where I caught the race was when um, both Ferraris had to come in and pit and then where you saw one, two, three, four on the finish, it it didn't change from there how they came out in the pit. So Leclerc was definitely not happy because yeah. he came out behind um, the two Red Bulls and I think from what you could gather on the team radio, he was like, you should have known that if you okay. pitted me now. Hometown um, boy. Yeah, he wasn't happy at all. And, look, I don't think um, the Ferrari fans would have been that happy either because he was he was in the lead. He had pole. Yeah. Um, but so, you know, Carlos, I oh, know Sergio Perez, you know, the Red Bull got the victory. Go. Yeah. Did you see the trophy they get? It's no, a Louis Vuitton case. It's I was more laughing at, uh, the people on the boats and stuff running for cover when the rain came for an hour. That was, uh, <laughs> Can't uh rain in Monaco for the Grand Prix. God. <laughs> no, that was a disgrace. So, uh, good news for the Aussies overnight. The, uh, in your hometown where you've just left is, uh, um, Hindley from Australia has won the first ever, uh, Giro d'Italia race. Uh, he got the time trial. Done last night. So he was runner up in 2020 a couple of years ago, lost it in the time trial, um, came back and got the victory. So that was good news for Australian cycling uh, overnight. How good's that? Yeah, yeah, very good. Amazing. And well also, just winding up the yep. soccer, uh, the local soccer, Western United won the A League final 2 0 over Man City. Yep. And so. they've got um, Melbourne City. Yes. And Melbourne they've got City. that um, Alino Diamante. So he played in the. Um, what the Italian team of the century for um always the Italian yeah well, I'm just saying you know always have to bring it back so they got a good crowd there it was a good result um not sure who follows the soccer in this office but we thought we better mention it for uh to wrap up the uh the A League final there <laughs> for soccer followers um what else we got the AFL's crazy week um ca- unbelievable comebacks this this week like seriously like uh you know um. Uh, giving up big leads, you know, or oh, sorry, yeah, giving up big leads and getting run down. Um, you know, Sydney did it, Brisbane did it, and also Melbourne also. So, um, yeah, it was strange. And also the Umps had another mare on the Friday night. Uh, over 60 free kicks given away in the Sydney-Richmond game. And obviously they had a bit of controversy towards the end, but, um, yeah, it wasn't a great week. Uh, well, it wasn't a great game to start off with the, a- the AFL, and uh, we'll catch him with OB on Friday to see how he wants to do uh, – Defend that match. I'm sure he'll put a positive spin on that. So, <laughs> other than that, uh, well, I've got uh, as we'll probably you'll be about to bring in top rope, but he'll be pretty happy. There's a few Aussie real te- Aussie real teams top rope that uh, uh, got the coaches under the pump. Yeah, namely Kangaroos, Essendon, and West Coast. They're really bottomed out. So we might not be too far away after the buys for uh, another coach falling over. I think Nick. Top rope. Have you got any thoughts on these three coaches and when they're going? I don't know who these three coaches are Nick. I'm fine. The AFL uh, are rather tedious watch these days. So um, I'd say Sack and Wall. 
Like Get rid of them all. Get them all. Um, yeah. New blood. Move on from them all. But yeah, look. Uh, look, I also thought it was a big weekend in sport, guys, and I engaged in absolutely zero of the sports you just mentioned. So we we're obviously running some very sporting streams, but uh, highlight of the weekend for for, for for rugby league fans around the world was the uh, Challenge Cup final. Time on a Challenge Cup final, Wigan came from behind to beat uh, Huddersfield, Huddersfield, uh, 16-14 in the uh, last couple of minutes. So uh, a great Challenge Cup final and, uh, yeah, one for the ages. And um, and did you see the squads were released for the origin? Thoughts? Oh, wow. Well, thoughts. I thoughts. have plenty of thoughts, Nick, and very few of them positive. Um, <laughs> to start, let's start from the top. Naming an alphabetical squad should be absolutely outlawed. And if Albo is serious about, you know, turning Australia for the better, he will never allow these clowns at New South Wales to put together some 22-man squad and not tell you who's playing where. Absolute clownish behaviour from the Blues. Um, big news out of them was uh, dropping Josh Adokar. Uh, he's been playing for Canterbury. He's been outstanding for Canterbury. How he missed out to 19-year-old Joseph Suwali, who's got, what, 15... 15 first grade games under his belt, absolutely astonishing. Um, Jacob Saifidi got picked uh, in the Blues squad. I don't know if Jacob Saifidi would be in the 40 best available Blues forwards. So uh, I thought it was a very arrogant arrogant team picked by Brad Fittler. I think the Blues uh, uh, might be in for a shock come game one. Uh, early thoughts there. Uh, Queensland side, not a lot of... Uh, Surprises, you know, everyone's great. Everyone's very pleased to see Selwyn Cobo debuting on the wing. He's been uh, an absolute revelation this year for the Broncos. But the the big news out there is, I guess, David David Fafita's fall from grass signed a one point two million dollar a year deal for uh, uh, the Titans last year, and he's um, he's been dropped. So they have been left out of the uh, extended squad as well. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad news for Fafita, but yeah, I, yeah. At face value, looking at the size, I think Queensland going with a uh, great shot. All right. So we could have what is going to be a really good three-game series, I think, there. You know, we need you, you need to have one each and then go for the third because that's what makes Origin home. And then, look, I think if they go for game three and then they go up to, to Brisbane, it's be very hard to beat Queensland. You know, it's very hard to beat them up there. Very hard. Impossible. Yeah, especially especially in a, in a, live, rubber, in a live rubber game with, you know, the series on the line. It's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be yeah, pretty raucous up there. And uh, yeah, I just I don't I don't really like the direction Brad Fittler's heading with this team. And, and I think there's been some some kind of curious choices that are kind of bordering and arrogant from them. So we could have another coach sacking at the end of this. We could just call for Brad Fittler too. I I look, you guys know I love I absolutely love a coach sacking. Brad Fittler being sacked as New South Wales coach would only throw him in the mix for the Bulldogs job. So I am all for Brad. <laughs> Not being sacked. Brad Fittler, extend him. Keep his job. <laughs> Nowhere near the Bulldogs. And uh, did you watch the golf this morning? Any joy? Uh, what, yeah, I watched a couple of times this morning. I had um, yeah, had Ryan Fox in the DP, the DP World Tour uh, for the second time in three weeks. He's blown a three-shot lead on the back nine when I was on him at uh, uh, better than 30 to 1, so it was fun. He, uh, he led by three standing on the last tee, uh, double, double bogey the last. Uh, Victor Perez uh, drained a 60-footer for birdie on 17, went to a playoff three times. Uh, Ryan Fox traded less than less than a dollar twenty in, in, in live betting. In four holes, Victor Perez has drained 100 feet of putts in the playoff and uh, and, and, and beaten Fox. So this is all happening. I, I'd, I'd gotten up with my young my young seven month old son. He was feeling thought, oh, the playoffs about to start. I'll just watch this hour and a half later. Crying myself back to sleep. Uh, but then uh, we did get a little bit of joy with uh, Sam Burns coming from seven shots back uh, to the last man standing at, uh, at Colonial today in the Charles Schwab Challenge. It was, uh, he was, he was zero hope, to, to be honest. But uh, uh, Scotty Scheffler failed to shoot a birdie for I think one of the first times in his PGA uh, career, dropped a couple of shots and then lost in a playoff. Burns draining one from off the green. So, a little bit of joy, and something for the battlers. Something for the battlers. All right, thanks, Top Rope. We're going to get into some scores now. We're going to check out the AFL for the weekend, and then we're going to come back to Top Rope a little bit later.
Sydney beat Richmond 106 to 100. Brisbane beat the GWS 110 to 96. Geelong took care of Adelaide 97 to 55. Fremantle, the big upset of the round, they beat Melbourne 94 to 56. The Western Bulldogs beat the West Coast 161 to 60. Gold Coast beat Hawthorne 121 to 54. St Kilda beat the Kangaroos 103 to 50. Collingwood beat Carlton 79 to 75 in the big game yesterday at the MCG. And Port Adelaide beat Essendon 66 to 50. MG. Yeah, it's a mixed round, Nick. Uh, we had some, uh, we had a couple of good close games, which is very good. The Friday night uh, game, other than the umpires interfering too much, uh, was an exciting finish um, and a high scoring game. So uh, that was a good one to watch. Uh, same with the Brisbane Giants. There was big swings in the betting, especially early. The Giants got out to a five goal lead against Brisbane. Uh, both scored near a hundred, and then Brisbane uh, managed to pull away. So uh, that was that was a good game to watch as well. Um, and then there was. You know, Geelong did the job over Adelaide. That was uh, uh, meant to be, I guess, 40-odd points. They did the job. The big upset, as you said, Fremantle over Melbourne. Melbourne finally uh, lost the game after 10 straight. That was an amazing, especially when Melbourne were up four or five goals as well early. Um, to come back and just put that third quarter on was unbelievable for Fremantle. So that uh, just brings Melbourne back into the pack a little. Um, we had some lopsided Saturday nights. Pretty ordinary football to watch, actually. Bulldogs smashed West Coast by 100. They're not trying. Uh, and Gold Coast, uh, I thought they were a pretty decent play for the weekend against Hawthorne. Got the job done. Uh, St Kilda just beat Kangaroos. Again, Kangaroos are just uh, the arse ends of the table. Not doing much at the moment, <laughs> the four Kangaroos. I don't know where they are. Uh, the, probably the most exciting match of the round, big crowd as well. 80,000 MCG on the Sunday, traditional rivals. We pumped it up uh, on Friday show and it didn't uh, didn't fail to deliver. Um you know, so there was some poor kicking from Collingwood that probably would have cost them the game. And if they'd lost that game, they would have been really disappointed by a lot of easy set shots, especially from um, Ginevan missed two absolute sitters. So it would have been stiff to lose. But geez, Carlton uh, made an unbelievable comeback in the last quarter to make it really exciting. And Port Adelaide Essendon, let's skip over that one because uh, that was a very ordinary game to watch. The weather came in the second half and they went goalless in the last quarter. So we will move on from that. Goalless in the last quarter. And that also gave top rope. The result that he wanted under 120. So there you go. Everyone won. Woohoo! Except for the Bombers. Don't let me complain again, guys. Don't <laughs> let me complain again. So we'll just check out the bookie wrap now for round 11. The fave, seven out of nine. Covers, four out of nine. Over totals, five of nine. And home teams, seven of nine. And if we go to the season stats here, the fave sitting at 7%. The covers are 50, uh, sorry, 70%. The covers are 55%. The over totals, 57%. And the home teams at 59%. As you said, probably where it's at for the weekend. Yeah, it's a pretty even week again. The, even though seven of the nine favourites won, uh, Fremantle getting uh, over Melbourne was uh, a, a decent result for him. Would have knocked out a lot of multis. Um, probably the big, the big, uh, big one for the punters for the week was the sustained go on Collingwood against Carlton. Uh, I think they opened around 22, 23, closed five. So that was an unbelievable go. Uh, probably one of the biggest plungers or sustained betting trends we've seen for the year. And Collingwood got the job done, so maybe the bookies weren't so happy with that outsider getting up. <laughs> no, I know one bookie that wanted Carlton <laughs> in that game. So we just have a quick look at um, MG Sting results for the week. So we had a total of how many units did we have bet? Seven and a half, ten and a half units bet with two and a half one. Um, as you say, obviously the Melbourne game, you'd have to forgive that one. And um, yeah, Collingwood Carlton. Yeah, so it got off to a good start on the Friday night. I was pretty happy with uh, Friday. Sh- shook out pretty well. Uh, the Geelong-Adelaide game, unfortunately, that total was going over easily into the last quarter. And with 15 minutes to go, Geelong decided to play keepings off for the rest of the quarter. Um, bit of a, uh, not a bad beat, but geez, they could have just uh, maybe kicked another two goals in the last 15 it, minutes would have been yeah. good. Melbourne blown out of the water. Oh, yeah. I, um, again, early on, they'd covered the line uh, early in the second quarter. And I thought, well, that we're away here. And then the Collingwood Carlton uh, missed too many opportunities early. So we ran, uh, what did we run? Just over two goals under that. But uh, yeah, some poor kicking. So, so yeah, one out of four for the week was pretty ordinary. But um, yeah, we were probably a touch unlucky in a couple to maybe show a profit. But uh, anyway, we're back to even for the, uh, for the year. Um, got to start again for the buyers, I guess. That's all right. Don't worry. Now we're going to have a quick look at the uh, premiership market. Uh, so Melbourne 260, Brisbane 5, Fremantle 10, Carlton 13, Geelong 13, Richmond 14, Swans 15, Western Bulldogs 17 and St Kilda 18. What do you think about this with Melbourne for the 260? Because I've read a few reports they're going to have a little bit of trouble possibly in the next couple of weeks. So should is there some value around them and or do you just think the 260 is okay or just wait and see it? 
Yeah, I mean, Fremantle, Fremantle are a top four side, so, I mean, it was a bad loss for him. Probably not losing to Fremantle, but being in control of the game early, being up and, and, and getting really blown out of the water. So, yeah, maybe some cracks. Obviously, they lost May and they just weren't able to adjust. So, a 260 is no value. I mean, in terms of like, you know, they were obviously tracking unbelievably winning t- first 10. Um, 260 you couldn't be diving into, but I understand why the bookies uh, haven't released the brakes on. They'd be tied up for uh, multis and everything going on. So, the value, uh, you know, I, I still think probably Richmond at, at around the $14. Uh, I think they're tracking okay. I think Fremantle and Carlton are both unders at this stage, um, and and I'm happy with my ticket on Brisbane from the start of the year. I think they're they're just going along nicely at the moment. Okay, I love it. I love it. Now we're gonna have a quick look at the uh, Brownlow and the Coleman medals. Uh, all right, Lockie Neal, geez, and Patrick Cripps. What do you think? Oh, you're still on Clayton Oliver, so he's really come in now from floor eighty, isn't he? Yeah. So Neil's just firmed in again. He was three ninety last week into three fifty. So um, you know the two, I guess, would kind of been leaning to Neil in the last probably month of football. Neil's continued to go well. I think he deserves to be favourite right now. Paddy Cripps, I'm still prepared to lay. I think he got into about 250 at one stage. Uh, just not sure how well he's going and he's playing a bit more time forward. Uh, Oliver's been going really good up until this weekend. He missed out. The trucker looks like he might be I don't know if he's injured or something but his last couple of weeks have been pretty ordinary so I think he's underpriced. Brayshaw's going along well obviously with Fremantle. Really don't want to entertain too much of the of the rest. So I'm happy with the tickets on Neil and Oliver at the moment. All right, perfect. Now we're just going to have a quick look at the uh, Coleman medal. Ooh, Charlie Kerno. He's short. And you've got Tom Lynch and Tom Hawkins yeah, there as well. He's short. He's, he's short because he's five in front now. I know, I'm just uh, saying. <laughs> and playing well. And Tom Lynch is obviously injured at the moment. And then you've got a couple of Geelong boys with Max King who's going okay as well. So not too much has changed. Um, just Kerno's got a five, five goal lead over there. So plenty of value if you're finding the winner in the Coleman. All right. Thanks, MG. Now, if you are serious about your AFL punting, you do need AFL stings. You can get that from $22 a week in the Little Betty Live TV shop. Thanks, MG. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with Top Rope to discuss all things NRL. Welcome back to First Look, proudly brought to you by topsport.com.au. Family owned and operated for over 35 years. Bet with a bookie you can trust. Bet with Top Sport. I'd like to welcome in Nick Top Rope Tedeschi to talk all things NRL. How are you, Top Rope? Oh, uh, Nick, it was uh, a big round 12, uh, Indigenous indigenous round. So we saw uh, uh, some, some wonderful you know, kind of tributes to the great Indigenous players that the game has seen. And, uh, we saw a whole lot of jersey clashes. So for those of us like me who are colourblind, very difficult week to find who was who. So, um, But we got there in the end. We got there. Um, round kicked off on Thursday. Uh, Melbourne Storm were far from their slick best, but got the job done pretty easily against a... Tom Trebojevic, less manly, 28 to 8. Cameron Munster absolutely started in the game. Uh, but, uh, plenty of plenty of steals, plenty of strips, and was was absolutely dominant. So big game from Cam Munster. Um, Panthers, uh, rather Cowboys in your top four clash on, on Friday evening, 22 nil. They were decidedly unimpressive with the ball, but could, did, did more than enough to, to, to not only win, but get the cover, which was uh, nice for those on the minus. Uh, big news on Friday night was the Titans. Uh, led, did the, led rivals the Broncos 24-4 at halftime. Uh, got run down 35-24, so absolute debacle. Uh, that club has, has fallen into all sorts of uh, uh, trouble, including going for a short kickoff when uh, leading by 14 points, of which the uh, Broncos returned it immediately. So I've uh, been watching rugby league for 35 years. Never seen that before, so... Uh, well under the Titans I managed to pull that one off. Um, Sunday, uh, Saturday started with a pretty dire game. The Warriors and Knights, 24-16, Newcastle, horrific game. The less said about that, the better. Uh, the Tigers led the Bunnies 18-12. Uh, looked like they were cruising. Uh, South really clicked at halftime. The new Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, was there, cheering on his beloved Bunnies. It was there to celebrate with Alex Johnson, who became South Sydney's uh, all-time leading try scorer. Uh, surpassing Nathan Merritt, so big, big night and big game for him to, with his hat trick there. 44 18 Tigers. Uh, Roos is far too good for the Sharks, 36 16. Uh, back to Belmore, sell out on Sunday, Canterbury, uh, despite their standing. The uh, game was truly sold out uh, a long time before kickoff there. Uh, and the Dogs were back to their uh, unfit, inconsistent best. Got beat by the Dragons, 34 24. 
big note out of that one was Blake Laurie, St. George Laura, prop scoring his first try in about 80 first grade games. So uh, that's how good the Bulldogs are doing. They're conceding tries to guys who have never scored them before. Uh, and then an absolute ripper to come to come home with 28 to 20. Parramatta beat the Raiders. Uh, real back and forth game, plenty of points that one. So, yeah, fantastic uh, into the round. So we just have a quick look at the NRL bookie wrap for the week. So we had six out of eight faves, six out of eight covers, five of eight over totals and four of eight home teams. And for the season tally, the faves are sitting at 66%, the covers at 50%, the over totals 52% and the home teams at 60%. Anything shock you there, Top Rope? Uh, nothing shocking, but just the, the run of overs is continuing. You know, we saw eight out of eight last week, five out of eight this week. Um we're certainly saying, particularly in the daytime games, that the scores are getting right up there um, at the moment. You know, uh, what would yeah to be a big consider a couple of low scoring teams of fifty eight points scored in the Bulldogs Dragons, forty eight in the Eels Raiders, and probably should have been a lot more there. So um, yeah, we are seeing some, some some pretty high scoring games. Thanks, Top Rope. Now, if we just have a look at the uh, GGOA results as well, you had a great weekend here, and I'm really unlucky with the West Tigers game because, like you said, they were competitive, and then they just sort of took. the Boot off the gas, and that probably would have got over the line for you. Look at you going this week, amazing! Yeah, nice little fill up for the, for the punters. We were a bit, uh, a little bit more disciplined this week, which was nice. Just had the, uh, the four players, but uh, yeah, three of them, three of them saluted fairly comfortably. The the the, the, the overs in particular never really looked uh, looked in a lot of doubt there. So, uh, yep, very happy with with, with the results this week, and uh, onwards and upwards. It's nice to head into the Origin period uh, ahead of the count, as they say. Thanks, Top Rope. Now, obviously, we are going to talk uh, Origin next week, but before that, we've got to cover Thursday night's game. So the Gold Coast Titans are taking on North Queensland Cowboys at Seabus Stadium, 7.50 p.m. Approximate betting prices at the moment, head-to-head, Gold Coast 2.75, North Queensland $1.45. The line's looking to be about 6.5 at the moment. No overtotals yet because it is only a Monday. Top Rope, what are your thoughts here, the clash? Yeah, uh, look, these games are always really... Incredibly difficult with, 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 of course, the origin contingent missing this week. We're, we're on a split around here. Uh, Tons will benefit from having Dave, Dave Fafida um, uh, available, which, which no doubt helps. Uh, I think we'll find um, uh, AJ Brooms will also be available. So we're leaning towards the Titans here. Uh, the Cowboys are already missing Jamalolo and Cole Felt. And, you know, they've lost Valentine Holmes. They've lost Ruben Cotter. Um, there is a chance, as well as Jeremiah Nanai, there's a chance Tom Deedon and Amisha Tabuai for Doe will also uh, uh, yeah, not be available if um, they do kind of come into the squad, so into the uh, 17, sorry. So uh, I've got to be with the Titans here, but uh, yeah, not a huge degree of confidence. Yeah, I know it's always hard going into Origin because there's so many players unavailable. So. Yeah, we might have a quick look at the NRL premiership market as well. So we've got the Panthers at 250, the Storm at 360, Parramatta 9, Roosters 10, Cronulla 14, Broncos 15, North Queensland 17, South Sydney 31, and the Raiders at 41. You see any value here? Do you think there could be any any value here before Origin and maybe, you know, some plays? Uh, not really. I, I, I think we kind of, the, the season's really started to crystallise here. Like I think... There's a there's a really strong battle between who the third best team in the comp is between the Eels, the the Sharks, and the the Roosters. You know, I'm kind of in the the Roosters camp on that one, but um, I think we're going to see kind of some drops in there, and, and absolutely one of those teams could could, could make the grand final. We saw it last year with South, but well, the, the longer this season goes on, the more this looks like a two horse a two horse war. And I know kind of Penrith have certainly kind of taken the the upper hand in the last. The last few weeks with uh, uh, Storm kind of dealing with some injuries, but yeah, Storm at full tilt will absolutely run out of the close. So, uh, yeah, like I said all year, yeah, broken record, but we'd rather be on the Storm at the price than the Panthers. But uh, um, if there's probably value outside of those top two, I'd, I'd say it's with the Roosters. All right. Now, thanks, Top Rope. If you are serious about your NRL punting, you need GGOA. You can find that in the Little Birdie Live TV shop for $22 a week. GGOA, he had a cracker last weekend. Get on top of it. MG. Yeah, time for charity uh, time for us, Nikki. We've got uh, our three charities that we uh, pick a selection for each week on a Monday. Uh, we've obviously got narrowed focuses this week going into the buy, so our choices are less. So uh, just quickly for the results for last week for week 12, uh, we uh, 
We went okay. Um, Richmond got up at the plus eight and a half. They just snuck in there on the Friday night. As uh, Top Rope said before, West were a comfortable leader, 18 to 12 at one stage. So he's a little stiff there to get run over in the second half. And you got on the board, the Panthers minus 10 and a half. They shut out uh, 22 nil win their victory. So two charities are good. So the leaderboard, as you see, six and six, four and eight and four and eight. So uh, I'm not saying I'm a runaway leader now, but I'm just putting a bit of pressure on you guys to uh, to lift your game. Top Rope's not happy. He's gone cold the last month or so, so he's uh, he's looking to hit back. Yeah, he's got his shake in his head. Wayside Chapel have texted him a couple of times in the last couple of weeks. So who have we got this week? Uh, Top Rope, we'll start off with you, mate. Uh, what, have, what have we got for the NRL this week for the Wayside Chapel? Sadly, they've been texting me, asking me when I'm coming for my soup because they figure <laughs> I'm out on the street the way things have been going. So. Uh, look, I'm going to go to the Titans plus six and a half. I, I envision with the selections that that line's going to change uh, and they won't be on six, six and a half. But, uh, uh, yeah, without any totals and only four games to choose from, not a lot of options this week. Yep. Okay, there. Titans plus six and a half there for top rope. Are you sticking AFL or NRL after your victory last week? What are you going for? AFL. AFL, AFL this week. And I'm going to go Hawthorne th- plus 13 and a half. Uh, plus 13 and a half against Collingwood. Yeah, uh, I know. I've got a few looks downstairs before when I said that too. <laughs> Some Collingwood boys up and about. They can't believe you're potting their side for next week. Okay, and I'm going to go in the AFL. I'm going to go to the last uh, match of the round there. Brisbane travel over to Frio. I'm really keen on Brisbane at this stage, plus six and a half against Frio. So there are our three early picks for next uh, for this week coming up. Thanks, MG. Now that is a wrap for first look on your Monday today. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, find us in the Apple Store, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Uh, Follow us on Little Birdie TV, Twitter and Insta. Remember, all your footy betting action is at topsport.com.au. I'll be here next Monday. Obe will be back on Friday with the boys. Take care. Have a good week. Hunt responsibly. Thank you.